the United Nations Agency, says nearly 5 million jobs have been lost in Ukraine, equal to 30% of previous employment levels as people have fled the country. And those employment losses could get even worse if there is a further military escalation in the next three months. The ILO estimates unemployment would increase by almost 44% to 7 million. But if the conflict was to cease immediately, the recovery would be rapid, with around 3.5 million jobs returning to the economy. The impact is also being felt further afield, with millions of refugees moving to neighbouring countries. Those that end up staying could put a squeeze on the available jobs. In Poland, which has taken in the most refugees, unemployment there could rise from 3 to over 5%. Moldova's 2.9% rate could hit almost 7%. Meanwhile, there's a significant ripple effect in Central Asia. In 2020, over a fifth of Russia's 12 million migrant workers were from Kazakhstan, with most sending a significant portion of their wages back home. The World Bank estimates remittance payments to Kazakhstan will decline by a third this year. Job losses in Russia could also see those workers return home putting additional stress on job markets. Well, Heinz Koller is from the International Labour Organization, and I asked him whether the employment losses in Ukraine would be temporary or permanent. Well, that's actually a very good question. We don't know yet is the answer to this. However, what we are seeing are um, uh, attempts, serious attempts of the government to relocate jobs and businesses from uh, conflict zones to more calmer and safer havens in the Ukraine. And there the big advantage of the Ukraine is it's a very, very big country. So the ILO is also supporting these relocation effects of the, um, of the government. But that remains to be seen whether this is lasting. If there is a resolution in a few uh, weeks, we can see already or we predict that uh, the job losses will drop to 8.7%, which is a lot less. And probably in terms of reconstruction, if you really have a lot of very uh, labor intensive reconstruction works, I mean, you have seen the destructions in the country, then the job losses might be even less, provided there's peace. And if young Ukrainians who have, for obvious reasons, uh, fled the country do not return home, what does that mean for the country long term? Well, first of all, we have to say most of the people, uh, it's a bit more than 5 million, 5.5 million at the end of April are actually women, children and men over 60. So most of the young men actually are staying behind. What we are seeing is already now a certain return of young people to the countries, in particular young women who want to join their families. However, uh, it would be obviously a massive brain drain for Ukraine towards, in particular, the European Union. Again, it's too early to predict what's happening because we do not know how this uh, uh, crisis and how this conflict and this Russian aggression is going to end. Peace is obviously the easy answer to this crisis, but let me ask you, what can global institutions like yours do to improve this? Well, first of all, you have seen the mission of the Secretary General of the United Nations to uh, Moscow and to Kiev. So there is a lot of uh, negotiations and discussions going on. As far as the ILO is concerned, we can, first of all, help our constituents, which is the government, the workers and the employers organizations, uh, to provide, first of all, humanitarian aid. Secondly, we can help uh, about the relocation project I talked already about. Third, we can already start thinking about appropriate reconstruction programs after this uh, uh, conflict ends. The difficulty is an uneasy peace with a neighbor like Russia may not be enough to win back the confidence of people who have fled Ukraine, and that must be a very real concern. Uh, to be honest with you, as I say, we are surprised to see already quite a high number of uh, uh, refugees coming back to the country. And again, uh, the uh, advantage is that's a very big country and many areas are only very little uh, affected. 
However, uh, we are on the ground as the ILO. We have our staff in the country and we are doing our best to build up this kind of confidence. But again, it needs to be on the basis of a peaceful resolution of that conflict.